Γεια σας, γεια σας και χαρά σας. Εδώ είμαστε για άλλη μια φορά στον εξωτικό, στο μαγευτικό, στο φανταστικό, στο φαντασμαγορικό χώρο του Trace and Chase για άλλο ένα επεισόδιο των Lost Tapes με την υποστήριξη της Τύχημαν και απόψε θα ανακαλύψουμε α, μέσω μιας λιδίας λίθου, τηλεοπτικής λιδίας λίθου, τι σχέση και τι κοινά στοιχεία μπορούν να έχουν ένας γλάρος και η Γκρέτα Γκάρμπο. Από την αμαρτία μου έχω τράξιμα. Με αυτόν τον τύπο πάντα θα έχει τράκ. Ευχαριστώ πολύ, φίλε. What do you want from me? How many. What, what did you not ask me still? Nothing. How But many. All, all how, many there is a... how many uh, interviews, <laughs> interviews? And. Uh... Hundred. <laughs> thousand. But you know, I still. I'm still learning things about you. The other day you told me that. Uh, but you will. You will answer. The question: how, how your kids call you? <laughs> Not a popular name. Okay, Hitler. But yeah. why? Because I'm tough. I'm, uh, you know, I don't take their shit. Uh, you know, they they think, uh, you know, in a certain age they 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 try stuff, and I always tell them, listen, uh, whatever you try to do to me. I did it yeah. to my parents. And I always have 30, 35, 40 uh, years more, more than you. So don't try to fool me or... Uh, I know that, I did that, so... But they are good, good, good kids, you know. I am, I'm very happy how... <clears throat> very proud of them, very happy that, how, how that went. Uh, and, um, They're good boys. You have three plus one boys. Yes. The dog. <laughs> yes. And there is a kid that uh, is in Canada or in the States who is doctor. No, the oldest one, yes. he's, uh, he was in the States. He graduated the, the college and he came back. You know, the, all, the, all, all this Corona stuff, uh, He was like his. Uh, he played for three years, and then last season was cancelled. So he finished his last year in uh, in six months, and uh, actually even even faster in three months. Uh, so he graduated in December, and uh, he came he came home because you know for one year he didn't go anywhere, uh, didn't practice, didn't play. Uh, And um, it was very hard, you know, for, for him. He came back home and now he's playing um, in Zagreb in second uh, di division. He's trying to do some, something, uh, uh, you know, for, for what he did in the school. And the um, middle one is, uh, I, I opened a, a little business in, uh, in Italy. So he went there to work. I want to teach them how to work. I want to teach them what is, you know, VAT, what is brutto, netto, and how to build something on their own, not to just wait for me uh, to give you money, yeah, to, to die. <laughs> 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 and the little one, he's 15, you know, he's uh, soccer crazy. He knows. I bet you uh, that he knows more players than than Guardiola and Mourinho together. <laughs> he knows everybody. Like we watch. We watched the, the opening game of the World Cup and it was, you know, Qatar and uh, Senegal. And he told me the name of Senegal players, each of them, each of them. and where, where they play. I mean, I know, you know, the goalkeeper because he's, uh, he's in Chelsea, but he knows uh, like a guy who from the second French division and stuff like that. Like I was like, okay, okay. How did you decide to adopt? The kids from Bosnia. Uh, he's not from Bosnia. You know, he's, he's no, from. No, he's from. Um, he's from uh, um, one one village near uh, Osijek, but ah, near Osijek, I, yeah. I didn't adopt him. He's. Uh, 
But you helped him a lot to... It's a situation, you know, when you are in my position, you have many people reach for the help. Yeah. And uh, I was, uh, you know, doing stuff, giving money. And then I had, I had one situation where uh, uh, they tried to fool me and um, they, one guy called me and asked for help if he's, uh, he needed, uh, you know, some uh, operation in the hospital and he needed, it was a lot of money. And he's, uh, you know, from the army and uh, I said, okay, you give me the bank account and you give me your papers and I pay it directly to the bank. And he sent me the, the piece of paper that was obviously fr framed with some language in, uh, in um, Latin. And, you know, I play in Italy, I know Italian, so yeah. it's very similar. very similar, so I could understand uh, some bullshit. And, uh, you know, I figure out, because he told me, a friend of mine uh, talked to him and he gave him my phone number. So I called this friend of mine and he said, no, no, no it's a... So, I, uh, you know, if people are, are uh, trying to do that, then, then I figure out um, how to avoid all this stuff. So, from that moment, I started to look for some people on my own. Because, you know, you can help everybody. Yeah. And everybody's asking you for help. And you can help everybody. And if you help 10 and 11, you don't help, you are an asshole. Yeah. So, I decided not to help anybody. Who, who asked me, but I look for the people on my own. Yeah. And that's how I found this, this kid uh, whose father died in the war and uh, before he was born. Before, three months before he was born. Yeah, so uh, I met his mother, I met him when he was you know, this big. And now he's, uh, he's uh, 30 years old and he's a doctor and, uh, and uh, I consider him as, uh, as, as, as my son, but uh, he's, he's not adopted. Yeah. No. Uh, but I remember this story with the late Zoran Sretanovic, uh, which you, you brought in your house during the Civil War. That was... Yes, he's my friend. Yeah. He's my friend. That's the least I could do, you know. Um, you have, you know, good people and bad people. That's how I divide people, not on the color, not on, uh, you know... The money or mm, the job Beliefs or, or yeah. uh, churches or whatever. You are a good guy or a bad guy. So that's why I'm here with you, because otherwise I would not come. I said before that I mentioned the name of Greta Garbo. Uh, <laughs> and I'm always said that Dino Raja is the greatest superstar I ever met. Do you still, are you still a superstar, a diva, as you used to be during your career? You know, I let, uh, I let that to other people um, to decide. I never considered myself uh, as, a, as, a, as a superstar. I did, I did uh, some things in basketball that are better than other people. You are better in journalism than me. He's better in, you know, camera and stuff with me uh, than me. So I'm just better in one thing yeah. in my life. So I don't consider that to be something uh, more valuable than, than what you do or whatever uh, else is doing. And um, I am just trying to be normal. I'm trying to teach my kids just to be normal. Uh, because uh, today, in today's world, I think uh, being normal is the most uh, difficult one. Yeah. <laughs> and the third element I put uh, presenting you is a seagull. Yeah. Which is... Yeah, it's a long... Uh, it's one book that, uh, that uh, was out a long time ago about my life. 22 years, yes. Until, until, uh, until uh, Zadar. So some, some things are missing. Maybe, maybe I do another one. Will be one. a second edition. Yeah. Uh, it's Moi Golebe, 
Galebe, eh? Galebe. Uh, it connected with the song of Oliver Dragojevich. Yeah. Yes. And what it's, what's the meaning of, of the seagull? You know, it's a free bird, you know, it's a bird that, 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 that uh, you know, flies in the sky and uh, you see it on the on a, on a, on a sea very often and uh, you probably have it here. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's one thing that, that I really uh, enjoy, you know, the, the freedom of doing stuff uh, the, uh, your way and uh, um, look yourself in the mirror always and, and try to be fair to everybody else. And, uh, you know, I don't know why is that and how it comes, but, uh, you know, um, I, I guess I was lucky really to have uh, great coaches to teach me and uh, to give me this uh, working ethics and, uh, and uh, teach me the basics and stuff about basketball. But I guess I was born with something that, that you cannot teach and that's you know, crazy, talent, crazy head. Mind, passion, what? You know, the, the, the head, the, the good player and bad player, it's a number of repetitions, how much you practice, how much, how much you do. But then, you know, good players and, uh, and, uh, and really good players, players who are separating themselves from, from others, it's only the head. head. How, you, how you have this, how crazy you are and how, I don't mean crazy, crazy, the positive crazy, how, how you are um, capable of, of uh, dealing with the, with the stress yourself, how much you can push yourself and how much you can go over the limit every practice, every day, every, everything, in everything. Because there is no end to that. Like uh, I play cards with my kids and my wife tell me, come on, let them win once. <laughs> <laughs> how, have we met? How, what do you want? I, I don't. How, how, how are you going to teach them? How are you going to teach them if you, if you let them win? Then, yeah. then you know, you are, you are creating the fake... Uh, Fake environment. So, but I don't know. That's like, I guess that's something that you are born with, and that's something that you, that you cannot uh, teach anybody. Is that uh, brought you in a trouble situation ever? I mean, the, the way that you are working, practicing, playing. This. Uh, yeah, you get you get in situations. Crazy, uh, you get in situations. I didn't win all my games in, yeah, in, sure. in my life, but uh, uh, whenever you have a problem. You try, first of all, look yourself in the mirror. And then you try to think in the future, like what, what to do to solve this problem. Because when you are uh, playing a game, like when I end the game, my coach never had to tell me uh, what did you do wrong or what did you do good. I, I knew that. Yeah. So, you know, you try to or watch the, the video or... or talk to your teammates or why we did this wrong or why we did this good. But basically it's something, you know, you learn through your career uh, the, 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 the game of basketball. The game of basketball is very simple. And uh, of course there are different uh, talents, you know, you, can, you learn how to read. And, and uh, I learn the basketball in the best possible way. You know, I had uh, Atsa Nikolic uh, who, who comes on the practice and at one moment he says, stop. And you know how you move for like uh, one step or two or, and then, then, then he said, no, 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 you were here, you were here, you were here, you were here. You were there, you were there. Your foot didn't stay like this, stayed like that. And then he played chess with you. And he showed you what you're supposed to do. The angle of the pick, the, the, the angle of the exit from the pick, the, how you set the pick. Uh, he huh. teaches you so many details yeah, yeah. that after when you, when you uh, finish the practice, your head hurts. You're not tired, but yeah. your head hurts. Your head is about to explode. <laughs> but then you learn stuff. And then, then when the game comes, you just act uh, automatically. You don't, yeah. you don't think. So, you know... Later, later, later on, like after four years with Bojo, last year, Malkovich. last year we had 60 different actions. Plays. Yes. So how are you going to defend me? <laughs> if we have 60, I mean, out, 
zone, man to man, press, all these things. 60. And first year we didn't have 60. We have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then we grew up, we grew up, we, we adjust because we didn't have the same places all the time. We had to adjust in this way, that way we had three or four different exits from, from every play. But then when you have to prepare for us, what are you going to tell your team? Yeah. They have 60 places. They, they, they can't even remember their uh, 15, what they have. And, and you think about 60 of ours. What uh, the late Professor Ratsan Nichols told you, I think it was uh, in the halftime, uh, after a fight you had yeah, during Munich. the game uh, with Sims. Yeah, in Munich. He, in uh, Munich. It was like... Uh, we, Maccabi, Tel Aviv. we had a play, uh, pick and roll, and uh, Sims uh, was trying to go through the, through, through the pick, and he hit me with his elbow in the, in, the, in the stomach. And he hit me really hard, and I went crazy. You know me. You know. So I want, I want the revenge immediately. You know, yes. I was young, I was 21. Yeah. I didn't think uh, back then like I was thinking later. But the game was over. It was very end to the first half, and luckily yeah. I didn't get him immediately. So we went to the locker room, and uh, you know, all this time during during the halftime, I was thinking how to get back to him. And Bojo was talking, uh, he was talking, and uh, I was distracted. So we are going out, and he comes to me and he say, "Don't even think about it." And I said, "Like what?" And he said, "You know what? You know what?" No, he was genius, absolute yeah. genius. He was absolute genius. The things he had in his head and then how he worked with us. I mean, ooh, when, you, when you are that young and when you do that, you don't know. But when you look from this distance, what, what he was. Who, who discovered your talent, the Split? Who is uh, the man that understood that Raja? Might you know, I, I was, I was uh, uh, doing different sports before I start with basketball. But uh, when I start, I mean, my mother pushed me to go. Yeah. Because uh, one summer we were spending summers in Ireland. Your father was a driver, I think. Yes, uh, he was driving uh, trucks and buses. And uh, my mother, uh, we, we spent summers on the island with the grandparents. Yeah. So my parents were working and they, 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 they wouldn't see us for three months. So after I came home after three months, I grew up a lot. And my mother told me, why don't you try with basketball? Because I try every year something. And then when summer comes, you stop that sport because you go with the grandparents to the island. And uh, in the island, it was uh, nothing. You know, yeah. the beach and the house and no electricity, and no uh, uh, water from, from the rain only. And... Uh, Village. Okay. It was lovely, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. fishing every day, all day, and it was lovely. So I, 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 I started with the basketball. Uh, I fell in love immediately. I, if you ask me why, I don't know. Probably because I, I, first day when I came to the practice, I found a couple of kids who were there al already, and, uh, and uh, I became friends with them. And uh, they, they just asked me, are you going to come tomorrow? Are you going to come tomorrow? So I came tomorrow. And then from that point, I really uh, um, accelerate fast. Why? I don't know. I mean, we did everything what everybody else did, but I guess I had that uh, in me. And uh, I really, I really, like, in a, I, I start pretty late. I was like 14 and a half. And uh, already when I was like 16 and a half, uh, there was some injuries in, a, in, a, in the first team. And uh, they invite us to come practice uh, with them and even to be in the team. So I was in the team for like three, three four games before they kicked me out. <laughs> uh, not only me, because it was three, th three of three us from a, from a junior team. And they kick us out because uh, after the, the practice, the, the, the A-team practice, we stayed to practice with junior team. And after the practice with junior team, we were, you know, throwing water in the shower. And the maid who was, you know, cleaning uh, told about that to, to our coach and he kicked us out of the team. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, you go plastic, uh, do you think of uh, 25, no, more than 25, 30 years later, that uh, let uh, an accomplished uh, job, a job which is not finished. I mean, the players left, and uh, probably the team had the possibility, might have the possibility to win, not three in a row, but ten in ten. a row. If we stay together, we will win ten. Easily. Yeah. Easily. Because uh, we were that good and we knew each other so well and um, we would, I mean, it, it probably wasn't possible because there was so much money involved uh, after that and uh, something that they, they couldn't match with, with any way. But uh, if, if we stay hypothetically together, until uh, until uh, like um, me and Tony, uh, age of 30, we would win everything. Uh, what made you, you go plastic are so special? Uh, do you think that you innovated the game or you presented the perfect game? We did everything. First I'll, of all, I'll was, tell you, I'll tell you. Was the basketball, uh, was total basketball. I'll tell you, to make it simple. I'll tell you what I think. I think that a couple of things are very, very important in this, in this uh, uh, story. Like uh, Hugo Plastic and Partizan, we were two great teams at that time. They had also a great team with Djordjevic, Divac, Paspal, uh, Danilovic, Savovic, Danilovic, uh, all of them, like great team. But one, one, one thing that we had advantage on them was discipline. Because we were always an hour before, we stay always later. If coach says uh, you go sleep at 11, you, you go sleep at 11. There is no, no shit about that. Partizan was not. You know, Divac was uh, going out uh, uh, before the finals. He jumped, he break his leg, he didn't play uh, one game. Those things could never happen in Ego Plastic. Never. Then, the, the total change of the basketball was not related only to Hugo Plastic, it was related to all that team in, in, from Bormio. Mm. Because before us, you had these big guys who stay in the paint and Waiting for the wait inside and didn't run. And, and uh, when Bojo came, first meeting we had, you know, it was me and Divac back then. Who is who's better player? Who's better? I'm better, of course, <laughs> but he's going to tell you the same thing. All of us think we are, we, are, we, are, we are the best. That's why we are so good. So, first meeting, Bojo, when Bojo came, he told me, um, if you want to be a better player than Divac, you have to run more than him. And I didn't understand what he's saying. Like, uh, why? What that why have to do run? running with, uh, with everything we do? But then you realize later, like, how much we change the perspective of the basketball. Look at the basketball today. All big guys are shooting from outside, yeah. are running Pick like, uh, like, uh, like, uh, so like on, guards yeah. and they're fast and, and uh, the, the back to the basket is a lost art. <laughs> what I did is a lost art completely. Today you have maybe Joe Embiid who is doing something and everybody else, maybe Jokic a little bit, but even him is playing outside uh, most of the game now. So the game was changed because of that group of players and uh, and uh, <coughs> dream team why they was uh, assembled because we beat them a couple of times in junior uh, twice in in uh, Bormio then we beat them in uh, 1990 in uh, in um, goodwill games we beat them in the world championship uh, russians beat them in um, 88 so they were they they start realizing there is a world outside of NBA, yeah. and I'm really really proud to be part of that 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 group that uh, I th I think changed basketball, you know like like uh, Colombo discover America <laughs> we 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 did something <laughs> hey, in this part. This is an hypothetical question, and when is this an hypothetical question? The answer it's is also hypothetical. Also no. Uh, do you think that uh, a unified Yugoslavia? I answered already, no. I guess the dream team. No, no. No, that, no way. That dream team was... Uh, maybe if you give 
um, uh, if you give us two years in NBA to play against them and and to to uh, to get some exper NBA experience, then maybe yes. But uh, uh, in that year with everybody, probably not because they were, they, they were so good. But also. You have to understand that uh, European basketball is different than NBA. European basketball is more tactics, more, uh, and we were really good in that. And and Americans, they were good, they were good. But back then we didn't believe. That's what I uh, why I told you. Maybe if you give us two or three years playing in NBA, to match with them every day, to see that that they are not like uh, from Mars. Like like we thought in the beginning, then maybe yes. But uh, you know, hypothetical yeah. question, hypothetical did, did, answer. Did you realize back then uh, that the whole team, the whole Croatian team, in the final against the Dream Team in Barcelona '92, the Olympic, uh, the gold medal game, uh, that you suffered the kind of bullying because of Kukoc? No, we we, we because the, we knew that. Yeah, we knew that. We prepare ourselves for that. First game, uh, we were uh, maybe surprised because what I tell you, we didn't have experience. But second game, like first game, Tony didn't play well. But the second game, he he played well because we knew uh, what are they doing. So we adjust our game a little bit. But we were too short, you know, on a, on a, like difference between starting lineup and yeah. uh, and the others was too big for. For us, uh, name me uh, name a game that you would like to play again. Name a game that I would like to play again. Yeah, Olympiacos. I, I don't know why. Uh, maybe Olympiacos. because you lost or because you played so good that you would like to play to play it again. Game five, game, game five, Olympiacos. Two thousand one in 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 uh, Oaka. Why? Because I think that game was stolen from us. I got called like five times uh, traveling in uh, one game. Come on. So that game I will definitely play again. Uh, we'll go later to uh, to your stint either Olympiakos and, or Panathinaikos, but uh, do you regret for going to Messenger? No. No, not really. Um, because I think I was 23 years old when I left. Yeah. I was a kid. You know, 23, you are not really Grown up, so what I had to go through in Rome, I think helped me a lot to grow up like a like a human being, not 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 like a basketball player. What? As a basketball to, player, to be too. More, more mature. Yes, yeah. but uh, if I went to the NBA when I was 23, uh, I would succeed. I would succeed anywhere. But um, I think maybe one year uh, before was was better to go. But uh, first of all, in that moment, uh, the amount of money that, that I got over there and the amount of money I got in, uh, in Boston was a huge, huge d difference. And uh, when you have nothing, then it's really hard to, to say no. Um, like I did, I did that many times after that. I, I, I didn't care after that first uh, contract. I really didn't care money. I, 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 I don't know, maybe maybe uh, people don't know, like uh, between first and second year in Panathinaikos, I had offer uh, from, from FS that was like five million. And I didn't want to go. I said no. Uh, and then I, uh, I, uh, when I went from Panathinaikos to, to Zadar, Zadar. I, was, I was in contact with Olympiakos already, but they were trying to negotiate uh, you know, less money and stuff. Uh, believing that you know uh, only Panagos can pay and them and nobody else, and I went to Zadar. I, I took two million less. Uh, I, I don't care because I, I want my respect and I want what I want, and I don't care about money. And I never care about money. Yeah. Talking about respect, I, uh, there is a story when you first m uh, play against uh, uh, what was it? New York Knicks in Madison. You played two back-to-back -back games. <laughs> Tell the story, it's very interesting. Yeah, uh, you know, New, was, New York and Detroit, they were like a tough teams, yeah. really. You know, with Mason, with Oakley and uh, Ewing and 
they were a tough team to play against. And they were cocky, you know. They, they never respect anybody. And we play one game in Madison, uh, you know, Friday and Saturday we play Boston. So in Madison, I had a great game. I had a score like 30 points. And uh, Pat Riley went nuts a couple of times because I, I did the same, the same thing, the same, you know, move to all of them. And uh, he, he, he got crazy. And uh, after, after next day, we, we come to Boston and we lose the game. Yeah. We lose the game. We, we come to Boston, and uh, you know, when the warm up, every Nick player come to me and how are you doing? <laughs> Good game. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about respect. Yeah. 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 yeah it took some time. It took some time for um, to to gain uh, respect. Gain from, respect. How do you evaluate the f the four seasons you played for? Excuse me. How do you evaluate the four seasons you played? Uh, I had, Celtics. you know, like first three, th three seasons, I had like a steady uh, progress. Yeah. You know, first year, I, I played good all three seasons, but, uh, you know, first season was a uh, little up and down. You don't know, you go from like uh, 40, 50 games a season to like uh, 90 games a season. So you always go 100%, but you cannot. In the NBA, you have to pace yourself. And I didn't know that, so I, I hit the wall sometime in, 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 in the end of January, early February. I, for like 10, 15 days, I couldn't score anything to anybody. And uh, I scored two, four points for uh, like six, seven games in a row. Uh, because, uh, you know, after uh, three minutes, I was uh, dead. So, you know, second year, I adjusted to that. Third year, it went better. And then I had a problem with my knee. You know, Tim Duncan was uh, next year uh, coming out of the college, so uh, I play only like half of the season, and they uh, I had an operation, and then this Pitino thing happened, and uh, I I I went back. I I felt that uh, I, <clears throat> I I I came to the top of my game. You know, NBA for me was. Like um, you have a biggest scale in your life. You know, you play all these good leagues. Uh, ex Yugoslavian league was a really great league. Then I went to Italy, which was really great, great league uh, by that time. And then I went to the NBA, which was the you know the highest possible level. So I uh, really did ev everything in my power to see how good I am. Yeah. So I, if if you ask me today if you give me a truckload of money and uh, ask me to tell you the name of one nightclub or discotheque or uh, <laughs> in, 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 in Rome and Boston, I cannot take the money. Athens? Later, then you Greeks destroy me after that because I start going out, but never, never before the game, always after the game and always, I, I, I don't like to drink, I don't like... I was always, you know, maximum professional um, about my work first and having fun after. But I did, you know. How can you live in Greece and not go out? Yeah. And, and then came Panathinaikos, but before that, before your transfer from uh, the Boston Celtics to Panathinaikos, you appeared uh, in, uh, in Paris in 96 during the final four. You was there. Yes, yes. Supporting the Stoiko. Was... Stoiko, he's my best friend, you know. He's, he's more than my friend. He's like my older brother. And uh, that, that was a year when I was injured. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, I came down to, to Paris when they had the Final Four. Uh, is it true that uh, Stoiko uh, advised you not to come to Greece? Yes. Why? He said, you are uh, going to get crazy. And, but... He definitely didn't know uh, me that well, because I really, I would never change, never change. If you now tell me you can change your history, something, you can, whatever, I would never change my three years in Greece, never, never. For any money, for any, anything, for any trophy, for any NBA ring, uh, I would never change my, my three How years. How did you manage to be so popular Although 
you played for both for Panathinaikos and Olympiakos. Usually, <laughs> the players who move to one club to another are not so popular to at least one side. I know, I know. You know, I am what I am. Yeah. And uh, I always play 100% for my team. I had one rule in my life. When I leave the team, I want to look the guy who pay me in his eyes. I don't want to look at my, on, on the floor. I want to look at, at him in my in, in his face. In his face. And uh, Greeks know basketball. Greeks are not fools. So I always play with my heart, and they know that. They know that. I always fight for my team. If I had to fight another player, if I had to fight another coach, if I had to fight a crowd, if I had to fight anybody, I'll fight it. You know, in a, in a way that I can do. And you know, Greeks are the same way. You know, Gr Greeks are uh, very, very similar to Dalmatians. We had some, you know, same ancestors. And that's why we, 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 we match, we match well. And uh, as I told you before, I would never, never change my, uh, my three years in Greece for anything. And you realize when you come to Greece now uh, that, uh, People stop you at the airport. You have no idea. Not only, not only in Greece. Like when I travel in the world and when uh, I see some Greek, uh, actually when they, they see me in the airport, anywhere, in Frankfurt, in Munich, in New York, in everywhere. Every time they stop, they want to take pictures. They, I mean, when I, when I was coming uh, here on Tuesday, I, I was a guy at... at at the gate. He was so nervous trying to have a picture with me. He was shaking. He didn't know how to, to, to turn off his phone. He gave, he gave his phone to his wife and I said, Phila, don't worry. We are in the same flight. I will not run away. <laughs> and by coincidence, coincidence uh, a Greek family rent your house and uh, split. Bought it. He bought the house. Not, yeah, not, not, bought, not just yeah, rent. Not yes. rent. Yeah. Yes. My, and, and he he became my Malerodakis yes, from Creta. From Creta. From Miraclio, yeah. And uh, we became the you know best friends and uh, he's uh, you know we have some a lot of same interest in the you know Formula One, MotoGP, not basketball because he's smaller than you. But you know, great guy, he married a Croatian girl. And Frankie Albertis said I will read you a statement. I thought I was a champion, but only when I played with Dino, I realized what a real champion is. What does it mean? A lot. What a champion is. A lot. It means a lot. From him, I, 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 um, I, he's a great guy. I, 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 I love him. I love everybody in Greece, but my teammates are, are always first. So I, I get two moments in my life that meant really a lot to me. One is uh, that, well, like many years later, uh, when we, uh, I came to Athens and we went for a coffee and he came to me and he said, listen, Phile, uh, you have no idea. I didn't know that back then because I thought you are a crazy guy yeah. who, you know, hitting the balls, uh, guy, balls yeah. and uh, the bottles of water and practice because we don't do something well. Like, what, what the fuck, what do you, why are you doing this? But then, you know, later he, he, he told me, I think that you change not only Panathinaikos, that you change the whole Greek basketball, because we learn from you what it takes to win, how to win, how to practice, how to, because we were always, you know, easy, hard, and, uh, go out, uh, buzuki, and uh, that was in our mind. And when we saw you, how you are dedicated, how you practice, how you do 100% all the time, then, you know, slowly, slowly we start doing the same things. And that's why I became a better player. That's why all my teammates, they were, I guess they were talking in a national team, yeah. how much they, they, they all learned from me. And that was one of the greatest things that, uh, that I, I, I really hear. And then another, uh, another uh, time, uh, you know that Ilya Zuros was my coach in, uh, yeah. in uh, Olympiakos. Olympiakos. He was very young. 
And I was trying... He was a rookie year, yeah. Yeah, and I was really trying to help him. You know, I, I didn't... I didn't, you know, come to him and tell him you oh, don't, you second, don't, you don't do your second year, yeah. your okay. things well. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I try to help him with certain things, uh, how we do this, how. They, also, I was crazy, you know, in the practice when they don't, when they don't do, do stuff uh, or when they even they, during the time out with the incident with family. <laughs> yes, everything. But that that's. <laughs> that <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's something that that uh, that he didn't like, and uh, he didn't want my help. And then after ten years, twelve years, I saw him. I saw him here on, in Thessaloniki when the Gallis had his game. Yeah, 2013. And, yeah. So he saw me and he ran to me. He jumped at me and he hugged me and he said. Bile, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know you are the best player I ever had. I didn't know that back then. Now I know how much you tried to help me. I was young and experienced. I'm sorry, but that, does that, it hurt don't you? worry. Does it hurt you that you didn't win the EuroLeague with Panathinaikos or Olympiakos? I'm sorry, but uh, that, you know what? Whatever I did in uh, world basketball on that scale, I did for Panathinaikos too. Because Panagos before me was, you know, mid, middle, uh, middle team with uh, no success for a long time, 14 years. Uh, In the league, yeah. Yes, and, they, and the mentality was uh, losing and everything. So what I did, I kick-start, not me, not me, me, Pixie, uh, Bodiroga, whoever was there. But I was part of that. I was part of the process of, of making Panathinaikos what Panathinaikos became, became later. Also. Yes, so yes. Uh, if if it wasn't that group, I don't think Jelko would come. I don't think uh, all yeah. other p players would come, and so I'm very proud of that. I I, I I think I did some really big things in my life here here uh, in Greece and uh, make make even Greek basketball better. Not only Panikos. Yeah. Before Game Five in, in the playoffs. Uh, season 2000-2001, there is another game five when Panathinaikos beat Olympiakos. It was the first time that the Greek team uh, won a, made the break in in game five. And uh, at the end of the first half is this fabulous three-point shot. <laughs> Did you realize uh, on lifetime that uh, that was something that might change the, the history of the game? No, you you take a look. Yeah. You take a look at that last uh, few seconds. Score is 29, 26 for Olympiakos. Yes, but you take a look me. L yeah. Look at look at me. What is what is uh, want to win and what is ready to win and what is concentration yeah. to win? Like I know they have the last offense. Yeah. And they shoot a little bit too early. And I realize they are shooting too early. So when I grab the rebound you look at my face, I, I take a look at the, at the clock, how much time I have. Yeah. So I see the clock is like 2.5, 2 something, like that, something yeah. like that. So I know what I have to do. So I don't look at the clock again. But I know I have one dribble, two dribble time and throw the ball. Throw the ball. That's how much you want to win. And then when you want something like that, then you get rewarded sometimes. I did get rewarded in the most possible, the best possible way. But that, that, that was not just, you know, happened by accident. I knew it, I look at it, I, I, I calculate in my head, and everything happened in a split second. I knew what I had to do, and that's what, what happened. Uh, I remember two years ago, three years ago, on your birthday, uh, 24th of April, uh, because you published on the social media uh, a picture wearing a footer of Olympiakos. You remember that? Yeah, Pixie gave me. <laughs> Pixie sent me sent me this stuff all all the time, and uh, you know that in Panathinaikos I'm not really uh, 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 likable person. Not not uh, talking about fans. I mean, uh, if you if you see their yearbook, uh, the year uh, 97, 98, it's not my picture. It's a picture of Byron Scott, and you cannot. 
compare what uh, what two of us did for the team. But I understand that. And uh, unfortunately, I would love to go to the game last night uh, to see the game, but uh, hopefully that's going to change sometime. Yeah. Uh, there is, there are a lot of uh, things and uh, a lot of stories during your career, either with Panathinaikos or for Olympiakos. I mentioned before that uh, that was a strange moment. What happened with family during the timeout? The game, that game Olympiakos had. Yes, but uh, you know, I uh, you hit him. No, I I, 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 I grabbed his, yes, his, grab his throat and I, I wanted to kill him after the game. <laughs> but that only happened because uh, he, 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 he um, damaged the team. You know, my team yeah, yeah. Is, the, is, is, uh, is a holy thing. My team, my teammates, it's a holy thing. So I don't care who I have to fight to win the game. So he damaged because he uh, was fouled or was not fouled, I don't care. So he bullshit to the referee and his player got offensive got rebound offensive. and score. And okay, coach called timeout, he, coach was pissed and he's, it's his job to deal with that. And I didn't do anything. But then he comes to the huddle and he starts uh, bullshitting the coach. And then when my <laughs> wires collected, The other you. incident you remember with uh, uh, it was a very young kid back then, Pelecanos. Uh, Peristeri. Peristeri, yes. Yeah. I mean, not only with him. I, I had, <laughs> that's, why, that's why, you know, and Olympiacos and Panathinaikos fans like me, because I didn't take shit from anybody uh, for my team. As I said, my team was a saint. It's a holy thing. It's a and, thing. and I do everything for my team. And the, the Greeks know basketball. They know, they understand that you are giving all your heart to the team. That's why they, they can't hate you, regardless of what you do. They are still asking you about that incident with uh, Dimitris Giannakopoulos after no, that game, Panathinaikos, Olympiakos, Atwaka? That's something that I'm not proud of and that's something that I, and, uh, that I don't want to talk about. Uh, I'm sorry that that happened. Uh, I was um, full of adrenaline, you know, after the game, and that was one mistake that uh, that it's not really. There is also uh, a story. It's not a story, that, but uh, everybody realized how brave you are uh, coming back from Milan after Panathinaikos, <laughs> uh, after Panathinaikos elimination to Stefanel all the. You beat them by 20 points in the first game, and the way that you defend the team, you defend Subotic, Pixie, and the way that you didn't go out by another door, but you would like to go straight. Yes, they, uh, after we lost the game, uh, I think it was Bologna. We get out of the Euroleague and uh, there were like 1500 fans waiting for us in the airport at two in the morning. And we came from, uh, you know, Kifsia yeah. to the airport with the cars. And uh, they said they are waiting for you outside and, and uh, we will bring the bus on the runway and we will go drive you home. And then tomorrow morning, we'll drive again to pick up your car. I said, I'm not doing that. I'm going to pick up my car. If I have to fight with a hundred of them, I will fight every, everybody. I, I figure out there is police over there. So first and second who come to me, I will knock them down. And then probably the police will help me. And uh, so I come out and uh, I stood in front of them and they were, uh, you know, bullshitting, but nobody stepped forward, you know. And uh, they were bullshitting for a little bit. I left, went home and everybody else went to the UCI with the, with, the, uh, with the bus. And next morning I was sleeping and they were <laughs> going to, to Glifada to pick up their cars. Uh, 
And after the game against Milan, not against uh, Fortitudo Bologna, uh, when you went up to the tribune and you throw the, the jersey to Panathinaikos fans? Uh, you know, you... Because you, on that time it was, let's say, a fight between you and the fans, but after that... No, no, I never had a, uh, never had a uh, uh, fight with the fans. Yeah, no fight. You have a, not you have a fight, fight with some They were disappointed individual. because of the elimination, yeah. You know, you fight an individual because uh, if you ask most of them, that team wasn't ready. That team was, uh, look, look where that team was. Uh, a couple of years er earlier, and they don't know the procedure, they don't know how that goes. You cannot buy five best players and win championship. You take now five best players from Europe, mm -hmm. and you create the team, what are they talking about now in Dubai, and bring these five players to Dubai. They will not win yeah. first year. I'm, I'm telling you for sure. Takes time. Takes time to build, take time to get to know each other, take, takes time to add, to see what's missing. And that's a process that takes some time. And to, we were, to build a mentality, yes, a winning mentality. Yes, we were not ready. We were not ready. Why, why Panathinaikos won later? Because they went through these stages and, and then they became ready. They had uh, this, this great player, Bodiroga, uh, great coach uh, who, who, who continued this story, adding, and you know, stuff, so... I have another statement, January 2001, you played another big game, Panathinaikos, Olympiakos, or Olympiakos, Panathinaikos, doesn't matter, you played always great in these special games. Uh, on that time, Olympiakos beat Panathinaikos in peace and friendship stadium, and it was Mark Fleischer, who was your agent. Everything you do is by purpose. Nothing by coincidence. Because of you, even angels could become devils. You know, or devils <laughs> could become angels. You know how that goes. Uh, when that game came close, I was, I was, I completely freak out. You know, I was. Now you remember the game? Of course, of course you scored twenty nine. I was, you know, you know, you had the guy who... That was the reason I made the, an interview in two consecutive days, four pages each. Going to Jerusalem, you played against Hapoel, and I, we made the interview during the flight because uh, of that game. Yeah, I, I told you, I, I, I was completely, completely crazy uh, that week. Because, uh, you know, of what happened and I, I came from the team to the team and uh, they brought Rebrachain in my, in my place and I want to prove them that I'm a better player. And I went to, to, to the weight room every day because I, I, I couldn't, you know, had to get that out of my, my system. Uh, I was full of adrenaline. I was like crazy, really crazy. And then when the when the game uh, when the game started and uh, with the, with the full arena I was flying really I was completely flying completely in control of everything and uh, you know, I had a great game and uh, we beat them we beat them pretty easy it was great you know satisfaction uh, for me but yeah. uh, uh, so it, mental thing really you asked both uh, Panathinaikos and Olympiakos to be the best paid player in Europe? No, 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 no. That, that's a, that was a rumor that time that Raja wants to be the player with the biggest contract in Europe. No, no, that's a little different story. Um, uh, Panathinaikos, always my agent. I never, uh, any contract, it was my agent. I never, I never uh, negotiate with anybody was my agent who did the job and I, I never, I never uh, deal. He come to me with the number, I say okay, and uh, I, nev I never deal with that crap. But what happened? After, after I uh, left Panathinaikos, Olympiakos came to me immediately with their GM 
Uh, Livieratos. Yes, calling me and uh, and talk to the Mark and. Uh, but back then, uh, it was only Olympiakos and Panathinaikos pay pay that kind of money. Uh, there was no CSKA, there was no Barcelona, no Real. So they know that nobody can pay beside Panathinaikos, and I'm not coming back to Panathinaikos. So they want to drop my price, and I say no, no, and. Uh, after some time, I was sitting on a coffee with, uh, with my ex-teammate, who was coach of Zadar. And he told me, what are you doing? You have a team or not? I said, no, I'm still waiting, uh, practicing on my own. Come to practice with us. And I was uh, already sick and tired of working on my own, alone. Uh, you know, I, I needed some you know, five on five. So I said, OK. Okay, so when I told my, my agent that I'm going back to Zadar, he, he went crazy, like, what are you going to get in Zadar? I said, I don't care, nothing. I don't care, I'm going to practice with them, and I have, a, I have it written in the contract. Uh, if, if a team comes uh, with offer, that I can go, any moment. But then, Zadar is like, you know, like 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 uh, Aris. I've been there, yeah. Crazy, crazy fans, crazy fans. and uh, and a very d d d difficult arena arena to play. And uh, when I signed, the whole city went crazy, crazy. And uh, the day I came, it was like thirty thousand people. You know, Zadar is like fifty thousand people. It was like thirty thousand people on presentation of the team. And then I got a call from, from Olympiakos, we give you anything you want, we give you whatever you want. And I said, no, 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 no. I, when I saw the, the reaction of the people, I said, no. So we played the game, the finals, uh, game three, and I got poked in the eye, and my eye uh, broke. I had like four stitches on my eye, inside, on the eyeball. Yeah, yeah. And I was in hospital, and uh, I, I couldn't see anything. Uh, and uh, next day, uh, Mr. Kokalis called me, and he said, uh, "Can you come to Athens?" I said, "I cannot come to Athens. I first of all, my eyes uh, uh, hurt, and I, I cannot see anything, and uh, I don't know how the." Connections are, and I, and uh, he said, no, no, no. And I send a plane for you. <laughs> you come to talk to me, me and you. No agents, no nobody. And then you go back immediately, the same day. And you know, Kokal is, is a big, big, big name, and uh, you cannot say no to him. And he was really great uh, to me and fair and everything. So I come to his office uh, next day and he say, first I have to apologize to you that uh, my, my people didn't negotiate the right way last year. So now it's me and you. I said, yes, but my agent, no, no, no. It's me and you and after the agent, the and, agent the and other people will work the, the, the details language the... details and stuff, but me and you talking money. He say, what's your price? <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why, uh, why uh, I did that, but it just came to me. And I said, I want one dollar more than highest paid play in Europe. <laughs> and he was laughing like crazy. And he said, like, who is the highest paid and uh, how much money he get? And I told him because Bodiroga was one, and uh, we had the same agent. Ugh. And he say, okay, I'll give you 50,000 more. <laughs> I said, I just need one. So I call my agent, <laughs> and I tell him, he didn't want me to go, uh, because he was afraid of what am I going <laughs> to deal with him. And so after I call him, and after I told him the deal, he said, maybe... Maybe I should come work for you. <laughs> Your watch is still in five o'clock? Uh, no, the old watch? The old watch, why? No. Um, I know what are you talking about, yeah. but uh, uh, that was one of the hardest 
uh, moments in my life, you know. Um, uh, how many coincidences happened that day and uh, how much he... It is Monday, 7th of June, 1993. Yeah. The day that Drazen Petrovic passed away. Yes, and that moment we were in airplane and uh, and the um, pilot told us uh, that we are going through the zone of turbulence, please fasten your seat belts. And I remember, you know, watching at my and my clock and watching downstairs. Downstairs it was five. Uh, five. five o'clock. It was the, the afternoon. Bright, bright day, you know, you, you could see, you know, but down was like a black, huge black cloud, really black, black cloud. And we fly over the cloud, little uh, shaking, and we land to Zagreb. Uh, everything went normal from Zagreb. I, I went to, to Split because we had like two days off, and I was home at night, and uh, I got a phone call. Uh, I was already sleeping after midnight. I was already sleeping, I was tired, and uh, I got a phone call that um, what happened and I remember I was uh, si sitting in the couch like this and if I was sitting down I would I would probably faint how how bad that information went uh, and you had a, a relation a daily Communication with Dresden. Uh, yes, yes, play, yes. Uh, we were really good friends. I mean, he was best friend with Stoiko. <coughs> with Stoiko? Yes. They were like brothers, you know, because they are same generation, like me and Tony are same generation. Born in uh, 1964, yeah. Yeah, and... Uh, but we develop, you know, mutual, you know, respect and uh, friendship in, in time, the, how I grew up uh, and helping with the national team and everything. And he would call me like every other day, and uh, it was no internet back then, no news. So I had to buy a sport newspaper. <laughs> Sports can always think. Yes, and read him all the scores, all the players, how many points, how many goals, uh, water polo, handball, everything, everything. We used to really talk a lot uh, um, in that, that period. Did the civil war change? your relations with the Serbians or the Slovenians or no. whatever? No, it, it did change stuff, but it didn't change my, my relationship. No, because I told you before, I always um, divide people with bad and good. And you cannot tell me how good person Divac is, only I know that. Yeah. So, uh, unless you see, see uh, stuff uh, with your own eyes, uh, it was really hard, but uh, uh, what happened is unfortunate and uh, out of our hands, but uh, didn't ruin our friendship. Uh, of course, you have seen Once Brothers, the documentary, What's your impression? Uh, listen, uh, I, I look at that movie from two different angles. One is the wrong angle, because the story is not uh, as, as uh, correct as it really is, because the story was like Divac and Dražen were great friends, which is not. Uh, the, the, the Dražen and Stojko were best friends, and Divas was best fr friend with me. And, uh, but, but the other angle is uh, making the movie to remember Dražen, yes. to have uh, uh, things about him in public. That was, the, that, that was great, uh, great thing to do. September 8, 2018, Springfield, the induction into the Hall of Fame. There is a funny story behind that. Who made the proposal for you to be a member of the... Uh, after I finish my career, uh, I play another uh, five, six years in uh, the one league, local city league. And uh, the guys that I play with, 
they call the MBA office. They ask what documentation is needed. They file documents and uh, they put me in the ballot. So I had no idea. And they did that, I don't know, 2008, 9, 10, something like that. And uh, when I get a phone call that, that I'm uh, going to be inducted, I was in um, one ceremony in, in an arena full of people and uh, the music and the, you know, the crowd and everything. So uh, back then I, we were like arguing, trying to change these qualifications uh, that are done in the a, in a winter time. Windows. Windows, windows. Because no, uh, you cannot use your best players. And we were trying to have a contact with FIBA and stuff. So I got a I got phone call from uh, uh, Kim Bohuni. She's uh, yeah. working She's for working NBA for a long time. Long time in relations and with And she European. called me and she say, uh, let me uh, hold on for a second. I have to put you... On a, on a connect call with uh, Zoran Radoj from FIBA. And I, I went out of the arena. I thought, I thought uh, that it's something about that. Yeah, yeah. So I, I wait for her to, to connect uh, with Zoran. And when Zoran answered, and they told me, like, okay, so we have a big news for you. You are going to be uh, in Hall of Fame in September. And I was like, you know, looking around me, like somebody is making fun of me. But you know, Kim yeah, serious. is a serious uh, lady. Zoran, maybe if Zoran was alone, maybe I would even go further with uh, not believing him. But uh, Kim is a very serious one. So I start crying immediately. And uh, they say, OK, but you cannot tell anything to anybody for one week. Because next will be the official next, announcement. Next uh, Thursday is going to be an uh, official announcement in San Antonio on the final four. So for one week, please don't say anything to anybody. So I went back inside <laughs> and with my friends and everything, and I was crying all the time because I could not <laughs> get that out of my uh, my head. I was all the time I was crying. And it was dark, so you could hide that a little bit. But then I said, listen, guys, I have to go. And I don't feel well, I have to go. Uh, I'll see you next day. And I went home, and uh, I had to tell somebody. I had, so I told my wife, but I had to tell her also, please don't, uh, don't tell anybody. And uh, for one week, believe me, for one week, I was uh, running away from people because when I ever see somebody I, I want to tell them, and that comes in my mind, and then I start to be emotional, I start crying, and people were like, what, what happened? What's Who that? died? Who died? And nobody died. No, 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 I'll tell you. I'll tell you in three days. I'll tell you in two days. So we, we went uh, to the one concert in Belgrade with everybody, friends, family, everybody. And after that, it was like a, a Wednesday night, late night, and the announcement was on a Thursday. So uh, after uh, we had a party and then uh, like uh, one in the morning, two in the morning. And you played uh, guitar? No, no, no. We got some, you know, uh, fun and uh, uh, Grasho, my, my, my friend, musician who was having a concert, he said, OK, I have to say something to everybody. Uh, Dino will be Hall of Fame. Uh, but you cannot say anything until tomorrow. It was great, really, really great, uh, great, great feeling. What did Larry Bird say to you when you went up together? He, during the ceremony? He, first of all, uh, I, ha I really uh, am so grateful uh, to him because uh, when I was thinking who will do it, uh, I thought uh, maybe somebody from from, you know, here, but nobody was, like, if Tony was before me, I would take Tony. Divac, maybe Divac, but, you know, I, I was not that much connected with, uh, with um, Novosel, like I was, like, uh, for example, with Bojo. If Bojo was there, I would definitely do that. 
So uh, I was thinking maybe somebody from Boston, and then uh, I, I I know Larry. I didn't play with Larry, but I know him through the team, and we 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 met several times. Uh, we went out for a beer or something, and I ask uh, I ask him, and he immediately say yes, because I know I had some options B and C. But he immediately says yes, and he said yes, like I'm very happy to do it for you. And so after that was decided, then then uh, uh, it was all set. The 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 whole this situation was uh, um, great. Like uh, I talked to Mirko Novosel about everything, and he told me how things are going. Uh, one day you get a jacket, one day you go get in inducted, and then the last day you get the ring. And he told me one one sentence at, at the end: "Whatever I tell you, uh, you cannot. You have no idea what's going to happen." So uh, really, when when everything was over, it, I was so overwhelmed with the emotions, with the how. The, much attention you get, how much uh, you feel uh, the part of that, how much they are grateful to, to your career and everything. And uh, it's really one of the best feelings that, and best ways to, you know, to, to put something on your career that say, okay, you did it. What time is your flight? Tomorrow morning, yeah. I kill you. No, no, I will stop the interview. Otherwise, you will miss the flight. <laughs> Thank you. Eight in the morning. I will have time. The bone, oh yeah, the astiavo me, but then astiavo me. Me to dinner, raza, boy, can you tell me like, oh, he hours, oh, he minutes, oh, he minutes, all the time. That is so boring, file. File anytime. Anytime. Next time, oh, anytime. Next time, with us to try and say. Ήταν άλλο ένα επεισόδιο των Lost Tapes με την υποστήριξη της στοίχημα από έναν άνθρωπο που ανεξαρτήτως του που βρίσκεται, του που έχει παίξει, του τι κάνει στη ζωή του τώρα ή τι έκανε, μιλάει πάντα όχι μόνο με το στόμα του, μιλάει με αυτό εδώ, μάλλον με αυτό εδώ, με την καρδιά του. Ευχαριστούμε πολύ που και σήμερα είσαστε μαζί μας, ραντεβού στο επόμενο επεισόδιο. Να είστε καλά και να έχετε την ίδια μαχητικότητα και την ίδια αλλεβεριά που έχει αυτός ο τύπος εδώ. <laughs>